Porsche has just released a new Macan for the 2022 model year. They've released three varieties, the base Macan, the Macan S, and the Macan GTS, which are all now available for order. So let's have a look at what these involve and whether they're worth considering, and what improvements they're offering over the outgoing models. And in short, there are some significant improvements in this new model lineup, and it makes it incredibly competitive compared to what they'd previously offered. And I'm saying this as someone who has owned two Porsches in the past, personally a Porsche Cayenne in the past and a Porsche Cayman Black Series. So let's have a look at the model lineup. There's basically three models now. The Turbo has now gone, and at the top of the lineup is the Macan GTS. Presumably there will be some form of hybrid coming in the future, potentially an electric model as well. So with the Macan GTS, the range topping one here, it features a 2.9 litre V6 bi-turbo engine. It now delivers 324 kilowatts. This is an increase of 44 kilowatts. Now with this, it will go the 0-100 km per hour or 62 mile per hour sprint in 4.3 seconds when fitted with the Sport Chrono package. And it reaches a top speed of 272 km per hour. The Macan S is now the second from the top. It is equipped with a 2.9 litre V6 as well. Now, this produces 20 kilowatts more than it did before, with a total of 280 in total. Now, this will cause significantly better acceleration. It will go from 0 to 100 k's per hour in 4.6 seconds, and a top speed of 259 kilometers per hour. Significant improvements over the outgoing models, and quite impressive figures. Now, for the base model, it has a four-cylinder engine, 195 kilowatts. Now, this has a 0 to 100 km per hour time of 6.2 seconds, and a top speed of 232 km per hour. Presumably, this would be the most fuel efficient of all of them. Now, all of these engines are coupled with the PDK dual clutch gearbox, and they have Porsche traction management, i.e. the all-wheel drive system that Porsche offers. These are actually reasonably impressive figures, given the nature of the car and given the price point. While Porsche has historically been known for rather heroic price estimates, at the moment the Macan is not terribly priced. In Australian dollars, for example, the base Macan is 96000 Granted, this is significantly more than it is in the United States, but it gives us a point of comparison. This is quite reasonable for like models in Australia. The GTS is about 1.5 times as expensive. So we're looking at significant price increments, but not egregious increments particularly if we're comparing this to the old Turbo versus the base model in the past. And this GTS has very similar performance to the outgoing Turbo model, making it very competitive. So that's effectively what we're seeing in terms of performance. Porsche's spiel, of course, is rather positive. It says here, Porsche launches the new Macan with increased performance, a sharper design, and a new operating concept. All three available versions come with significantly more power than their predecessors, as the sporty flagship of the successful SUV lineup. So that is effectively their spiel, and we can see that there is some basis to this in terms of the improved performance. Porsche also claims that there's an optimized chassis, to use their words. They state that the new Macan models offer a wide suspension band, uh, offer a wide suspension bandwidth, balancing maximum suspension comfort and dynamic sports car performance. The chassis has been optimized further. The Macan now responds even more sensitive, sensitively to, direct, uh, to direction and, and the driving situation of the road conditions. So that's effectively what they're saying in Porsche Spiel. In short, this basically says that we now have PASM available as an option, which it was before, but it is going to significantly improve performance and handling. They also state as well that the Macan GTS sets itself apart from the other derivatives, even more than before, with an art standard sport air suspension, which enables one to lower the body by 10 millimeters. Whether or not people are likely to do this is another question. And in an SUV, one centimeter of lowering maybe is not going to make terribly much difference. But nevertheless, one can do so. Furthermore, in addition to this, it says the dynamic benefits of the new DTS are above all due to the fact that the air suspension is 10% more rigid on the front axle and 15% firmer on the rear axle compared with its predecessor. So this creates a increase in the amount of sportiness in the GTS. But of course, 
Whether or not Ron really demands that or requires it in an SUV is another question. Then in addition to this, they say, the optional GTS Sport Package further increases the dynamic potential for the car, with 21-inch GT design wheels with performance tyres. Porsche Tech Vo Torque Vectoring Plus and the Sport Chrono Package. So there are some significant performance options if one really wants to take these on board. There are also design improvements, although one might be hard pressed to really tell these apart from the predecessor. It certainly looks a little bit sharper, but maybe not significantly noticeably so. It's not going to be that easy to tell the difference from a distance. However, we have some new standard features, such as LED headlights being standard at the moment, which is, of course, significantly better than was the case, because LED headlights were in the past not standard, and were in the past an option. So it's nice to see those becoming more standard now. So Porsche claims the LED headlights with Porsche Dynamic Light Systems and Sport Design Exterior Mirrors are now standard on all models which is, one could argue, what it should have been all along, but nevertheless, that is not nice to have as an inclusion. We further have here, on the new GTS, the centre of the nose section, as well as other elements, are finished in black. The rear is now rounded off towards the road, with a striking diffuser, to use their words, in a particularly technical design, again, their language. Here, here and at the front end, it features a new 3D structure, which is also optionally available in the car's side blades. Now, 3D structure, let's be clear, does not really make any sense at all. The whole car is 3D, so it's not clear what on earth that even really involves. But nevertheless, there are some subtle design changes, although one would, as I've indicated, be hard-pressed to really tell these from a distance and I suspect it won't be a particular selling point in reality. There are apparently 14 colours available. Many of these colours, of course, will be rather expensive options. Furthermore, wheels are available in a couple of sizes. So 19 inches through to 21 inches, depending on exactly which model one is getting and how much exactly one wants to spend on it. And of course, as with Porsche, always there are myriad other exclusive manufacturer options which enable one to customize the car further, albeit at a rather high price point. So that's what we're seeing in terms of exterior design. And in general terms, we're seeing some improvements, some subtle changes, but perhaps not significantly noticeable changes. And they are, I dare say, unlikely to push people between models. Rather, I suspect the performance improvements are going to be the bigger selling point for the Macan going forward. So that's the exterior and the performance. We can also think a little bit more about the interior. The interior has been slightly redesigned. So we now have an enhanced interior, which has a redesigned center console. Porsche claims that this is the new operating concept to use their words. And their spiel is, it's a new operating concept, which makes the use of touch surfaces instead of tactile buttons brings a clear structure to the cockpit. A new shorter selector lever sits in the center and is clearly organized in this clearly organized control module. And then they've redesigned the analog clock at the top. In addition to this, one can get contrasting seam packages, although I also dare say these will be a rather expensive added option. But they can be an option to have, particularly if one is going for higher end packages. One also has a 10.9 inch touch display in the center of the console. And that also means that one can uh, take in voice commands according to Porsche Spiel in any case. And there is a new multifunction steering wheel as well, which is apparently sourced from, or at least analogous to the 911. So we're seeing some improvements in the interior. Other options would include 18 way sport seats, a carbon interior package, a race tech's upholstery package, and extended leather options that can be brought in. Then, as I've indicated, you could have contrast stitching as well. So in short, we're seeing some significant changes to the interior, although many of these will be incremental rather than revolutionary. The interior still looks much the same as it always did, 
albeit with some slightly different design options. So overall, the new Makan is a significant improvement over the outgoing Makan. Pricing, of course, is still on the expensive end. In Germany, for example, Porsche states, the prices start at €62,900 for the base Macan. In Australia, this is about 98000 Australian dollars. We'll be seeing this a bit lower in the United States. What this effectively means is that Porsche is pricing this reasonably competitively. And unlike in some other models, they don't appear to be price gouging, at least not too much, in non-euro markets. Which is a huge plus if one is looking to get into the Porsche brand. So overall, I think there are some significant improvements. I think the Porsche Macan is an attractive package. It has become increasingly attractive over time, and the GTS in particular looks like it is well-priced, and there's quite a degree of sharpness in the pricing throughout the whole price range, which does make it an attractive proposition. So it certainly is a car that I would be keeping my eye on and monitoring it as it comes out. But as with all new cars, there will likely be a degree of depreciation. So whether or not one wants to buy new versus buying used will obviously have to depend on one's personal financial situation, the exact financing structure one is using, and what is available in one's home market. Overall, the Porsche Macan for the new 2022 model year is certainly a competitive option and one that I would be keeping my eye on.